first thing that I want to talk about prayer, and we'll call it davening, is many, many people make a mistake and they daven as if they're using a cell phone or a car. What I mean to say is like this. When you drive a car or when you know, use a cell phone, you don't have to know and understand all the different mechanisms in the cell phone. All you got to do is press the, letter, the numbers and you're going to make a connection. When you drive a car, you don't have to know, you know how the battery works or how all the gas siphons work and you know, the antifreeze, all you gotta know is that you, know, you start the, uh, however you do it, with a key and the accelerator and you're driving. You don't have to know the inner workings of a car or a cell phone to use it. And the truth is that if somebody just says the words that are in the Siddur, that is also, in a sense, making a connection to Hashem. But we're really losing the most important aspect of prayer. And I wanna show you something very interesting. Many of you certainly remember the story in the Torah when Yosef was sold by his brothers and his poor father, Yaakov, didn't know that Yosef was still alive and he missed his son for 22 years. How horrendous is that? A father who loved his son didn't know that he was alive. He thought he was dead and he missed him for 22 years. And finally, all of you who know the story, he gets to know that Yosef is alive and he goes down to Mitzrayim to see him. And before Yaakov dies, he says to Yosef a very interesting statement that the Maral picks up on. Vayome Yisrael el Yosef. Those of you who are taking notes, it's in Bereshis Memches Yud Aleph, which is 4811 in Bereshis. Vayome Yisrael, Yisrael is Yaakov, el Yosef. He says to his son Yosef, Ro'oi ponecha. Seeing your face, loy filolti. What does filolti mean? So Rashi tells us, I never even had the thought in my head. Loy milani libi lachshev machshava. I never even gave it a thought process that I would see you. So the word filolti means a thought process. Says the maral, that's where the word tefillah comes from. Tefillah is a thought process. Tefillah is not just verbalization. Of course, if you don't know the words, you verbalize them, and hopefully one day you will learn the words. But the real connection of tefillah is to know the meaning of the words. Because just like when I'm talking to you, and I'm thinking about every word that I'm saying, and I'm watching your reaction, and I'm watching how you relate to the words that I'm saying, that's exactly how Hashem relates when you know what you're talking about and you're having a conversation with Hashem. Davening is actually a conversation. And how great it is when you know the meaning of the words and then you're really making that conversation with Hashem and that's why tefillah is so meaningful. So I want to share with you some interesting thoughts. And so for many of you here, some of these words of the tefillah will be familiar. For some of the newcomers, these words will eventually become familiar, but just keep them in the back of your mind because all the stories that I'm going to tell you, the basic theme is to know what you're talking about so that you're connecting. And it's written in the Shulchan Aruch, in the Code of Jewish Law. It doesn't make a difference how much you daven or how little you daven. Echad HaMarbe, the one who does a lot, the one who does a little, over levad. The main thing is shiyachavein liba l'shemaim. You're making a connection with God, the one above. So you don't have to worry if your friends seem to be davening. They're davening the whole sitter. You don't have to worry about that. You just daven what you understand, and you daven what you can say, and you can make a connection. And if it takes you longer to daven, and you're going to daven less because of that, that's fine. That's okay, because tefillah is as the morale teaches us, it's a thought process. Mm -hmm.